Hey everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up squad? So uh, welcome to your readings for the month of October 2018. Again, thank you so much for tuning in and returning if you are doing so. Please keep in mind that these are general readings, okay? So take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. And because these are general readings, the energies can be switched. They can go either way. So just take it as it resonates for your specific situation. And if, does, if something does not fit, please do not try to make it fit because then that will only confuse you. Yeah. Um, I do want to extend a very happy birthday to all of the Libras, since in the Western system, we are in Libra season. Happy, very, a very happy birthday to you and a very happy birthday to the October Scorpios. Yes, because we will be moving into your season in late October. Now, if you are you, if you resonate more with the Eastern system, of which I do personally, then we are still technically in Virgo season. So very happy birthday to the Virgos out there that resonate with the Eastern system. Yeah. Um, if you don't know which side you resonate with more, uh, I have provided some links in the description box below. If you like, you can go to those links and you can put in your birth uh, data and calculate your, your birth chart for both the Western and the Eastern system and see which one you resonate with. For me personally, I grew up believing I was a Taurus sun, but then when I started investigating and learning about Eastern astrology, I learned that I'm actually an Aries sun and that kind of fits a lot better. I resonate with that much more. There is no absolute answer as to which system it's, is better. It's really all about what you resonate with the most. And of course, depending on no matter which side you're on, still watch the videos. They can resonate at whichever, in whichever way is best for you. Okay. That is all your decision. Either way, the readings are here for you to watch. Yeah. So, um, just a little bit of shop talk. I am available for personal readings. If you would like a personal reading with me, you can get my email address from the description box below, as well as a list of all of the readings that I offer. Um, if you cannot decide which reading would work best for you after going through the different options, you're still welcome to email me and we can chat a little bit about what is going on with your situation and I will help you decide which reading would be best for you. Yes. I will be at Om Shanti Bookshop every Monday from 11 to 5 p.m. If you would like to schedule a time to meet with me and have an in-person reading, in -person reading for face to face, you can find the link to the website for Om Shanti in the description box below. And once you get to the website, you will find their phone number. You are encouraged to give a call and let them know if you would like to book a reading ahead of time. Otherwise, walk-ins are 100% absolutely welcome. Just come on down whenever you have a chance. Yeah. For the readings this month, we're doing the same as we did as last month. So we're go using the Golden Universal Tarot. I love this deck, you guys. It's so pretty. And then, of course, we're finishing out with my best friends, the unicorns. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So... I believe that's it. So without further ado, let's get to the readings, guys. <laughs> Hello, Aries. Welcome to your reading for the month of October 2018. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's get into it. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages for Aries for the month of October 2018 to serve the highest good of all involved. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Aries. So, um, either you guys really want to talk, or you guys are really, I should say we, because in Eastern astrology, I am an Aries, and I, um, my sun sign is an Aries, and so I've really been connecting with that a lot lately, but, um, you're either, we either really want to talk or we're really driven around something or towards something, by something. Because I was seeing us, woo, oh boy, okay, so we've got flyers here, but I was seeing around the deck while I was holding in my hand and praying, 
I was seeing yellow swirling around the deck. So the yellow is the color of willpower, um, it's direction, it's drive, it's clarity, it's illumination. It could also be about communication. Um, and so you're really driven around about something. So you've got the Page of Wands here, but you've also got the Nine of Swords. The Nine of Swords is what flew out of the deck here. But underneath that, you've got the Page of Wands, okay? Um, there's a new direction that you really want to move in, Aries. You may have already started moving in that direction or you want to move in that direction, but ultimately you're in, you've are you got some anxiety around it. And I feel like it could be because you're kind of like, I don't know, is this really the right thing to do? I mean, I feel like I want to go in this direction, but I'm not quite sure. Um, this feels good, Aries. I'm not going to lie. It feels good. If you feel very, I feel like you're very, you're pretty clear on it especially with all that yellow energy that was coming through. Um, and, and what I want to say to you is just go for it. Just go with it. Roll with it. If this is something that's happening um, and it's flowing naturally, do it, Aries. You don't have to be so up in your head about it. And it's weird because I feel like that's not so characteristic of Aries. It's, I feel like you're very sure of yourself. You're very sure, you're, Aries are very headstrong. And once you make a decision, decision to move in a direction... I mean, you're ready to go. I just feel like what's keeping you in this Nine of Swords energy is the fact that this is really a brand new direction, okay? This is something you've not, you haven't necessarily tried before. You've embark, you're embarking on a brand new journey. Um, this could be spiritually. This could just be, you could just be taking a, an approach to something that you've never really tried before. Um, and it might be giving you anxiety because you don't necessarily know how it's going to work out. All right, one more shuffle for you, Aries, and then we're going to get into it. Okay, let's cut the deck here. All right, overall energy for you, Aries, we've got, yeah, we've got the two of swords. You're really indecisive about this, aren't you? You really want to move in a new direction. I really feel like that. I really feel like it. Either either you want to move in a direction, but you don't necessarily know how to do it, or you're feeling the call that you feel like you need to move in a direction, a new direction, but you're kind of like, uh, at a stalemate. Uh, I don't know if I want to do that. No, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You, ooh, you got the three of swords. The two of swords, the three of swords, death, and you've got the three of wands. Okay, so what's going on here? There is a situation in your life in which heartbreak has been realized, okay? Um, the good thing about this is that transformation is at hand. Um, wow, give me a second, guys. Let me just sit with this for a second <clears throat> and see what I can channel here for you. Because this is kind of a conflicting situation. It's like heartbreak has happened. And you're very aware of the heartbreak. You're very, very aware of it. And this is something that, this is a situation in which this could be a relationship, a love relationship, a partnership. This could be a business partnership. This could be family. This really could be anything, okay? Take this as it resonates. But in whatever the situation, heartbreak has ensued. Okay, with the three of swords, and this is really something that you. This is a, a this is a, a, a situation or the ty type of situation that you've been desiring, that you've been putting a lot of effort into, and you've been waiting on a, a, a return on your investment here with the three of wands. With the two of swords, however, there is something that you don't that doesn't necessarily want to be seen, and this is where it's kind of going in two different directions. Either you don't want to. See the heartbreak of the relationship as it truly is um, and move forward from there and potentially like leave this situation behind. Or you're so wrapped up in the heartbreak that you don't want to see a different potential outcome for the situation. And either way, it's, it might be hindering some sort of transformation. But it's not hindering it too much because what I'm getting from death here is that this transformation is going to happen whether you go with the flow or not. So either you're going to go with it or you're going to be resistant to it. Either way, the transformation is going to happen, okay? 
And also what I'm getting with the three of wands is ultimately a return in your investment is going to come forward. All right. It's just a matter of where is it going to come from? So the only thing I can really suggest to you right now, Aries, in your overall energy is to just is to leave this two of swords and energy behind and just be open. Be open for the universe to really help you work this out in the best way possible, okay? For the first half of your month, your, your first set of energies, you've got <laughs> the, <laughs> the Eight of Swords. Good Lord, Aries, what are you all up in your head about? Feeling like you're in a mental prison, and I really feel like it's directly connected with this Two of Swords energy. But here, Aries, I really feel like there's something you're refusing to see here. The Eight of Swords is coupled with the Hierophant. Okay, this could be a Taurus. Um, but this also could be a marriage, a committed relationship of some sort that's feeling, that's got you feeling trapped. I'm getting an energy of feeling trapped in a situation, but the, the entrapment is coming from not necessarily seeing things as they truly are or as they potentially could be. Um, not really seeing things, not being open-minded enough to really see how it could work out differently. Now, on the other hand, you could have been in a, a situation, a marriage, a relationship, a committed relationship in, or it doesn't even have to be a relationship. It could be a social setting, uh, anything that's really structure based, anything that has to do with society, the status quo, um, government, religion, anything, any sort of situation like that. You could have been in this situation and it felt and it kept you feeling trapped. And even though there was heartbreak here, you were, you were at a stalemate as to whether or not to leave this behind or not. But what I'm getting here is also that maybe you have reached this illumination and now it's finally time for transformation to happen. Maybe that was the yellow energy that I was seeing in the beginning of the reading for you. You may have really finally reached that illumination to a certain extent in order to pull yourself out of this, but you still, this situation helped made you feel trapped in some way, okay? Second set of energies for the first half of the month. There's that nine of swords again. Oh my, Aries. You've got the two and the three of swords, and now you've got the eight and the nine of swords. You are really like moving in succession here. Nine of swords is coupled with the moon, all right? The moon, to me, a lot of the times can mean cancer, um, because cancer is ruled by the moon, but... But here, your anxiety is stemming around the fact that you don't know which way to go, that things are not really as clear as they should be. There's still a lot of illusion or deception around you. And what I'm getting here for the most part is you really need to rely more on your intuition than your ego to see this thing through, okay? Or at least to figure out which direction you want to go in. The challenge for the first half of the month the star. Okay. So the star is keeping hope and faith here. Belief, and I'm really feeling like it's belief in yourself. Hope and faith in the universe to really help you lighten this out, but uh, uh, iron this out. Um, and there is healing that's coming to play here, but that is the challenge. Healing from this situation. The star is coupled with <laughs> judgment. All right, you've got a lot of major arcana here so far, Aries. You've got death, the hierophant, the moon, the star, and just and judgment. So the challenge is going with the flow and hearing the call of the universe and just following your intuition and following where this light leads you to. Okay, there really is no reason to be anxious or stuck up in your head about this when, when in reality, if you're following your intuition, if you're following your heart, if you're following your gut, if you're following the the um, the instruction or the guidance from your higher self, your angels, God, whatever, whatever you connect with, there's really nothing to be worried about. There's nothing to be afraid of, okay? The potential outcome for the first half of the month. Well, I like to see this, the 10 of swords. So now you went from the eight to the nine and now you're reaching the 10, okay? I, 
I mean, you can't really, you really cannot make this up, guys. This is really intense. Look, you're starting with your overall energy. You got the two and the three of swords. And now in the first half of your month alone, you're, you've gone from the eight straight through to the 10 as your pers your potential outcome, okay? The 10 of swords is coupled with <laughs> the chariot. All right, Aries. So this is really a great turnaround here. Now, the chariot is the official, for the most part, that's understood as cancer, okay? Um, and actually also people see, I think people see the moon as Pisces. Anyway, anyway, take it as it resonates. But here, um, this is moving in the direction that is much better for you. This is moving full speed ahead away from the situation that has really just been tumultuous, painful, rough, dra knock down, drag out, like just excruciating in many cases, but you're moving away from this. You could be connecting with a cancer. You really could be. But this is moving in a better direction. And understand, Aries, like I said before, when we were talking about the challenge for the first half of the month with the star and judgment, if you're following the guidance of your higher self, of your spirit, God, creator, source, whatever you connect with, if you're following that guidance, with love and compassion in your heart, there is nothing to be afraid of, okay? You are, in fact, moving in the right direction with the chariot here, okay? All right, for the second half of your month, the energies, uh, surrounding energies, you have the two of cups. So there's, you're connecting with someone here, okay? Um, after a time of heartbreak, of, of tumultuousness. I mean, that's this is great. The two of cups is coupled with the Four of Cups, though. Uh-oh. Are you connecting with someone? Or is someone, like, rejecting the offer? Is someone... Mm... Well, that's, that sucks. <laughs> uh, that sucks. Um, you could be... And, and it doesn't have to be so bad. You could be connecting with someone and they're just kind of like, I'm hearing unrequited love. Unrequited love, okay? That's what I'm hearing. But they also could just be like, no, nah, I'm not so sure. They could be kind of hesitant about it. Um, or on the other hand, Aries, this could be you, okay? Someone could be coming forward and saying and trying to offer you something, offer you um, a date, a commitment, um, a, a chance, you know, to see how things go. But you coming out of this energy here with the Ten of Swords and all this, the Two of Swords, the Three of Swords, all this crap here, you could be hesitant to actually accept this offer. Okay? Or it could be the other person. But I am hearing unrequited love. Being taken for granted. The second set of energies for the month, the surrounding energies, you've got the Queen of Wands. So here you are, Aries. Okay. Queen of Wands is coupled with, oof, the King of Cups. Okay. Well, gee. Uh, well, gee. There is more, okay, more water. <laughs> more water definitely could be a Cancer. Could be also be a Pisces or a Scorpio. And actually, you have Scorpio right up here with death. You really could be connecting with a water sign here. Um, this is an interesting combination because I'm seeing this as, a, as an individual being magnetic, um, and allowing things to come towards them, being sociable. They're very, you know, very attractive, very charismatic, um, very much a, a social butterfly, a people pleaser in a sense, very popular. But then also when it comes to love, either there's someone, there is some sort of water sign, male or masculine energy that's coming forward towards you, or you could be expressing this. You could be moving forward um, as the King of Cups. I personally see the King of Cups as someone that is very much emotionally expressive, is not afraid to express their emotions, okay? Whereas I see the Queen of Cups as the individual that is more, um, keeps their emotions you know, under wraps to themselves. So this could go one of two ways. Either you, the fire sign, are moving forward with what you desire, like you're very sure of yourself, you're very confident, you know what you want, and so you're in a place where you're gonna go after it with the King of Cups, or someone is gonna come, someone's probably gonna be coming after you 
who is very emotionally sure, very much wearing their heart on their sleeve, very much is like, hey, you know, I, I know what I want and I want it from you, so why don't we make this happen, okay? Now, you, Aries, really could be the one that says, uh, hold on, I'm not so sure about this. Oh, God, I don't know. What happens? And then you're up in your head, and here comes, here comes that eight and nine of swords energy again. What happens if this just turns out to be like the last one? Don't give in to that, okay? Don't give in to that. Allow the universe to bring something that is more suitable to you, okay? Have faith. Hear the call. <laughs> Answer the call. The challenge for the second half of the month, you've got the lovers. Could be a Gemini. The lovers is coupled with the, oh my goodness, the Ace of Cups. Your challenge is accepting the Ace of Cups or giving the Ace of Cups. I'm really picking up an energy of you need to just have faith in the universe. If you have been putting something out there, especially as the Queen of Wands, if you've been putting a desire out there, then you need to have faith that the universe is bringing something to you that is going to help you realize that desire, okay? So your challenge is going with the flow, is accepting or giving out some offer of love. Now, if you feel like you want to move forward towards somebody, this is your challenge right here. Because you have a connection here with the Ace, um, with the Ace of Cups and the Lovers. You've got a connection. Okay? And on a, I'm going to go ahead and say that this, I mean, you have the Two of Cups and you have the Lovers here. I mean, this is a this is a deep connection. This is I will say that this is somewhat of a divinely guided connection. What 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 reading did I do for this month? Who was it? Was it Capricorn? Where the title the title is divinely guided. I think it is Capricorn. Um, if you have Capricorn in your chart or you're connecting with a Capricorn, they're really, I don't see, other than the Hierophant here, and the Hierophant is mostly Taurus, I don't see much other, many other Earth signs. Capricorn is the opposite of Cancer, though. I don't know. Maybe you want to check that, but I am getting an energy of, this is somewhat divinely guided because of all of this major arcana here, okay? Okay. The potential outcome for the second half of the month, you've got <laughs> the Three of Cups celebration. Maybe because someone decided to, 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 you know, give in and accept an offer is what I'm picking up here. Three of Cups is coupled with, oh no, <laughs> the Five of Cups. Uh, and it's so crazy. Oh my God, that's so weird. That is so weird. Aries, uh, Aries, I need you to look at this, okay? I really need you to look at this here. You have so much succession in your reading right now. In the overall energy, you've got the two and the three of swords. In the first half of your month, you go from the eight of swords to the nine of swords, and finally to the ten of swords, which I love. And then here, in the second half of your month, you've got the ace of cups, the two of cups, the three of cups, the four of cups, and the five of cups. And... In your outcome here with the Three of Cups, these three cups are spilled. And then you got the Three of Cups right underneath that. The Five of Cups is clarifying the Three of Cups. And then you and then you're but you're left with the two. So what I'm getting here is yes, there is celebration that's coming here, but it's after it's after a hard won victory. Okay, this is a hard one. This has been a challenge, all right? Because I'm seeing the Three of Cups is all is a celebration, yes, but it's also a third-party situation of some sort. And you have that depicted here in your overall energy with the Three of Swords. And that is probably what was, I mean, you might have been in a situation where there was a third party. That Now, that third party could be work, it could be another potential lover, it could be friends, it could be family, it could be any 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 other party that is getting in the way of the relationship, okay? And there was an energy of at being at a stalemate, not knowing what to do, not knowing which way to move forward, not necessarily wanting to see things clearly, see things as they truly are. But now you have a transformation coming. You have that, that, that situation is coming to an end. It's dying away. 
Okay. In the, and then you have that depicted in the potential outcome in the first half of your month with the Ten of Swords and the Chariot. So now in the, the, the potential outcome for the second half of your month, you really have the Three of Cups energy being dying away. Okay, and this could be, this absolutely could be why you have this two of cups here, but then you also have this unrequited love, or you have this offer that's not necessarily being accepted all that quickly. Why? Because someone is still mourning the loss of this three of cups. Not realizing that you still have the two of cups behind you. Okay, and... <laughs> My goodness, Aries, this is this is so synchronistic. It's insane. Because look here, you've got the Four of Cups. And look at this. This person is looking at that Three of Cups and it's just like, oh, God. Oh, God. And then the universe is here trying to hand you the Ace of Cups right behind you. But you're sulking over this Three of Cups. And look, the challenge of the second half of the month is the Ace of Cups, guys. I mean, you can't make this shit up. This is fan This is crazy. <laughs> But ultimately, like, this is really good, Aries, but you have to get out of your head about this. You have to. Because ultimately, what's really been going on here for you is you have been working on manifesting this. This is exactly what you've been desiring. But you're getting caught up in the past. I'm just going to say it like that. You're getting caught up in the past. Things are not as they seem, Aries, okay? With the moon here and the nine of swords, it's just... Wow. Literally, uh, the potential outcome for the second half of the month, all you have to do is dry your eyes, let go of those three cups that are spilled, and turn right around and look at the two of cups. Ooh, sorry. Look at the two of cups that's right behind you. Look at that. Literally, look. I'm, I'm holding the two of cups here. The two of cups is behind this person right here. And this person is standing there looking, looking down, upset about these three cups that spilled. Look, I understand. I under I get what this three of cups is. I, I feel it. I can feel the energy. It was something that we that we thought was going to be it. We thought it was it. And you probably invest worked real hard and put a lot and put a lot into the situation, invested a lot of time and energy into the situation, only to have it crumble because of third parties. With the Three of Swords and the Three of Cups. But you have another three here, and that's the Three of Wands. So keep in mind, Aries, that whatever, or ooh, this could be the Cross Watcher, it doesn't matter. But whatever you've been investing your time and energy to, please understand that it is not, it has not gone to waste. Energy cannot be destroyed. So even though you may have been putting your time and energy into a situation that didn't necessarily pan out, that energy or that that effort you put into is still going to count towards something. Okay, you just have to allow the universe to bring that in, that return on your investment into your life. But in order to do that, you got to let go of the three of cups in order to have space for that two of cups. Okay, all right, let's get into your oracle guidance for the month of October from the unicorns for Aries. So I'm definitely going to go ahead and say that the illumination, the yellow energy that I was seeing and channeling for you guys for the beginning of the reading is the illumination of what the relationship that you've been working towards has really turned into at this point, okay? That the, the, the yellow energy, the illumination is the abolishment of the two of swords, okay? All right, Aries, Oracle Guidance for October 2018. What you got for us, unicorns? What you got for Aries? Oops. What you got for Aries, unicorns? There it is, right there. Oh, you got two. And underneath the deck. Ha-ha! All right. Passion is underneath the deck. This is very much your energy here, Aries. Do what excites you. Get fired up about your life. Increase your energy levels. Yeah. We also have trust. Leap into the unknown. Have faith and move forward. Believe you will fly. And I'm pretty sure that's what the star and judgment are saying for the challenge for the first half of the month here, Aries. Trust. Have faith. Everything's working out exactly as it should be. 
your energy, your time, and your effort has not gone to waste, Aries. And then under uh, at the end of that, we've got growth. Seek out a mentor or a guide. Take baby steps as you grow. Be willing to learn from others. But also be willing to learn from the situation that you're coming out of, okay? But you're, I mean, honestly, I'm going to say that with growth here, that's absolutely saying that you, Aries, have come to a to fruition or you come to a point where you've really learned a lot out of this last situation that you're transforming out of here okay you learned a lot so just allow that to help propel you forward and to be more successful in the future okay all right, Aries, there it is. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Much love to you all. And I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of November. Yeah, take care. Bye.